Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz, and today we're going to be tracking the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Olga before going up to far north Queensland to take a look at a potential tropical low that could dump a significant amount of rainfall for areas between Cairns and Mackay. We're going to start things off with Olga and then head over to far north Queensland, but if you want to skip to that part of the video, the timestamp is in the description. So taking a look at ex-tropical cyclone Olga right now, she got downgraded at about 2 a.m. local time uh, to tropical low status. However, However, considering the wind observations right now and just a look at the system, I reckon that this is still a tropical cyclone. It would have gale force winds in at least three quarters of its um, area, considering the thunderstorm activity that it is firing up. Don't get me wrong, it still looks really quite disappointing for a tropical cyclone uh, because it is being... Um, sheared apart. It's in an environment of very high shear, which means that the center of circulation is being displaced from where all the thunderstorm activity is, but that still hasn't stopped this system from producing winds of 70 kilometers an hour on La Grande Island, and they are currently increasing as well. Now, I do believe that Karatha is going to be spared from full-blown cyclone force conditions. They'll likely receive peak wind gusts to about 70 kilometers an hour this afternoon, uh, but it's going to be areas such as Varanus Island and Barra Island that do also receive cyclonic conditions. Uh, as this cyclone makes its final approach to a landfall, which will probably happen between Onslow and Karatha in around 18 to 24 hours time. Uh, this system isn't going to be strengthening, it will be weakening, and it, as it does make landfall, it will probably do so as a dying system with very little thunderstorm activity. Uh, this storm has held on a lot better than what all forecast models and also what I have initially predicted. Um, I do still reckon that maybe 100 millimeters of rain call, uh, rainfall could fall somewhere along the coastline around Karatha as well. So there is still a risk of flash flooding, but the majority of the rainfall is going to be falling further inland um, into communities such as Tom Price. We'll just take a look at the wind forecast and then we'll get in depth into the rainfall forecast. You can see the system at making its final approach to a landfall or a close passage, which will probably happen Thursday uh, mid morning or early afternoon and it completely loses its cyclonic winds as it moves ashore. Like I said, Varanus Island and Barra Island are going to be the places that pick up cyclonic winds. There's going to be very little uh, threat to areas such as Exmouth, Onslow or Karatha or Roburn that receive cyclonic winds in this stage here. Um, wind shear is something that I would also like to bring up for this tropical cyclone right now. It's looking really ugly for this system at this time. So the center of circulation is currently located right here where the low pressure area is. Now wind is about 50 kilometers an hour out of the west. That's about 30 knots. Now, 30 knots is the absolute highest uh, end of wind shear that a tropical cyclone can really survive in. So this system can still survive in 30 knots of wind shear. It will still, of course, weaken and look more disappointing as time goes on, but you still could have a classifiable tropical cyclone at this time. Once this system starts moving further south and gets in towards 70 or 80 kilometers an hour of wind shear, all of the thunderstorm activity is going to be completely blasted away from the tropical cyclone and there'll be nothing left of it. Uh, so that's what's going to be happening and that's why it's going to be weakening and that's also why even though areas such as uh, La Grande Island, which is very close to Karatha but not Karatha, are receiving cyclonic winds, it's because of the thunderstorm's proximity to the centre uh, and that's not going to change. The winds are going to remain offshore, they're not going to be coming onshore and areas uh, on, the Kim on the Pilbara coastline rather really don't need to worry. It was still a pretty bad forecast cast from us in the Bureau of Meteorology in the sense that we weren't calling a cyclone landfall. I did highlight the possibility that areas between Coral Bay and Karatha should prepare like there's a Category 1 cyclone coming ashore and I still stand by my word there. There is still the chance of a Category 1 strength system coming ashore or an equivalent system coming ashore uh, in the next 24 hours uh, but for, especially from the Bureau of Meteorology they're still calling for the system to completely miss a landfall or any land interaction for that matter um, on the uh, Pilbara coastline but that's actually actually happening right now where there is some significant land interaction going on. Now I will still take a look at mid-level humidities because that is quite a uh, pretty map to look at. It's not looking very good for the tropical cyclone right now but mid-level humidities they give us a really good idea on the amount of moisture available for convection for thunderstorm activity uh, that this tropical cyclone can take advantage of. The more moisture that's available of course the 
uh, better the case for the tropical cyclone. Now, right now, there is still a little bit of moisture. There's actually quite a lot of moisture, rather, uh, adjacent to the Capilbara coastline, and that's why it's still blowing up some pretty significant thunderstorm convection. Convection is just thunderclouds, by the way, in case you're getting confused. Uh, but uh, it is still blowing up some significant convection. That's because we've got high mid-level humidity values of around 80%, which are very conducive for tropical cyclones. But, I mean, look at where the low-pressure area is right now, 5%. I mean, that is just abysmal. That is some of the lowest values that I've seen for a classifiable tropical cyclone in the Australian region in five years of looking at weather models. So, uh, yeah, this is really quite a disappointing outlook for this tropical cyclone. It only gets worse as you play it through, and that is purely because of wind shear just pushing all of this dry air in the Indian Ocean right on top of this tropical low, or remnant low that I should be calling it right now as my voice completely disintegrates. And yeah, this tropical cyclone is going to have a very, very hard time very shortly. Now, as promised, let's take a look at the rainfall forecast for this tropical cyclone because Olga still is blowing up some pretty significant convection. I don't think it's as extreme as what the weather models are saying right now, but there is still quite a bit of rainfall in the storm's core. Um, rainfall accumulation in terms of maximum rainfall that can be expected over the next 24 hours, possibly up towards 25 to 50 millimetres for Caratha. For Roeburn, it's probably about 25 millimetres. Port Hedland might get a cool 10 millimetres. Onslow, maybe 25 millimetres as well. Exmouth should remain high and dry. Barra Island and Varanus Island should get up to 100 millimetres, and the same deal with Panawansia. Yeah, even though only 40 millimetres is on the forecast, considering it will be taking the centre of the storm, it could receive up to 100 millimetres. But just to illustrate the fact that the system isn't done right now, you can see where the storm's uh, main thunderstorm activity is. Just to give you an idea of how strong the thunderstorm convection is, it's still going to drop 200 millimetres in the next 6 to 12 hours uh, in regards to where the storm is right now. Then after that, the storm is going to be heading inland. It should be heading south for a little bit, and it will um, inundate the Gascoigne and the northern wheat belt communities with a little bit of rainfall by the looks of things. In fact, quite a lot of rainfall. Maybe a wet season, a late season burst of up to 70 or 80 millimetres for parts of the Gascoigne, and then maybe down a little bit further south, you're looking at about 10 to 25 millimetres as you get towards Kalgoorlie, but nothing crazy by the looks of things, and certainly no rainfall for Perth, of course. I mean, who would think that we'd be getting rainfall uh, any time between October and April? I mean, that's just a foreign concept for Perth, isn't it? I mean, very sarcastic here. We do miss the rainfall in Perth, that's for sure. But there is nothing on the cards. It's all remaining out in the goldfields and in the extreme eastern parts of the wheat belt. And it should actually extend down towards Esperance and Albany and then other parts of the Eucla coastline. Uh, very, very sparsely inhabited area of Western Australia. There's likely not going to be many people impacted by this tropical cyclone's remnants. If there was more rainfall, I'd actually be very concerned for this corner of Australia, considering the fact that they had half a metre of rainfall only about a month ago now. So uh, I would actually be very concerned for this uh, part of Australia if there was more rainfall on the cards but again 25 millimeters on top of what they've had it's nothing crazy it could still cause some minor flooding in areas but i don't think it's going to be causing a world of problems in the eucla district of western australia nothing else really going on across uh, western australia and south australia it is now time to head up north to far north queensland and take a look at the rainfall that's going to be materializing there now of course tropical far northern queensland can get rainfall all year but it's very unlike uncommon that they get such a degree of rainfall this late on in the wet season. I mean, we're now pushing in towards mid-April and certainly when this rainfall is going to be occurring, we're going to be looking at sometime around the 16th or 17th of April. So certainly starting to get quite late in the year. But what I think is going to be happening is from Monday onwards, we're going to see this tropical low start to develop in the Coral Sea. It's likely not going to be a cyclonic system. It's just going to be a monsoonal sort of system. The Axis G3 has been highlighting it quite nicely. They've got this spinning up south of PNG and that's going to be drawing in a a lot of moisture from the South Pacific. I mean, talk about a disappointing uh, cyclone season in the South Pacific. We haven't had any activity there since I think February, and I've been very excited to track some systems in the South Pacific, but we just haven't had the chance to, so a bit of a bummer there, but I digress. We're taking a look at this tropical low here, and that's going to be drawing a lot of this moisture ashore from Tuesday afternoon, by the looks of things, right throughout Wednesday, Thursday, and then into Friday, especially by the looks of things. Well, Thursday is going to be quite wet, and hopefully easing off a little bit 
by Friday as this tropical low moves further south. And this will likely spark another thunderstorm event for southeastern Queensland, very similar to what New South Wales and Queensland have just experienced. So again, it's about 10 days out. We'll need to watch the forecast a lot closer. The eastern Blue Bluebird actually has a pretty similar situation. They've got it just a lot further north. And by situation, I mean a similar setup. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I could talk for hours about this, but just taking a look at what the eastern Blue Bluebird model has here, it is a similar setup. It's just about 2,000 kilometers north. Now, the reason why this concerns me is because we'll likely see something very similar to what we saw. I think it was last weekend, or yeah, Friday night into Saturday in Sydney and also into southeastern Queensland. We'd be seeing a very significant amount of rainfall fall here. But again, this is the Access G3 model. It's generally the overestimator of all the forecast models. So I'm not 100% sold on it actually happening at this time, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm certainly now very sold on this tropical low on the Coral Sea. It'll be a weak system, might get designated as tropical low 12 U briefly, but it will be drawing in enough moisture to provide maybe 300 millimetres of pretty unwelcome rainfall for far northern Queensland, but certainly maybe 100 or 150 millimetres of very welcome rainfall for areas between Bundaberg up towards Townsville, especially between Mackay and Rockhampton. They could be receiving a significant amount of rainfall there. Yeah, maybe about 100 to 150 millimetres up there, and then a further significant amount of rainfall up towards Camps and Innisfail, although that hasn't really registered on the Access G3 model. It's mainly the Eastern Rebef that's really cool calling for the significant rainfall here. They're calling for quite a lot to fall around Innisfail, up to 300 millimetres, and then down towards Tully, maybe 350 millimetres as well. South Mission Beach, 200 millimetres, and then up towards Berlin and Kerr, possibly 200 millimetres as well. I always like to highlight the possibility that this is dramatically underestimated, the um, Eastern Relief model especially. I mean, uh, it is a very high resolution model for what we have in Australia, but it's nothing compared to what we have over in the United States. So uh, the uh, the Axis G3 model and the Eastern Blue model, they are high resolution models here, but they really don't crank out the detail that we need to really see into these mountain valleys up in far northern Queensland. And also down in Tasmania, I find that to be quite a significant problem. And that's why rainfall often blows out dramatically in far north Queensland. I mean, Bomb might predict 80 millimetres, and technically they're right, but you might be wondering, well, how did 300 millimetres fall? You're just in this valley that really drives rainfall right up. Uh, because of the leaf cyclogenesis effect and also the mountain uh, effect that the mountains have on rainfall, uh, you can really see your rainfall accumulations dr be driven up significantly by factors of two or three from what the Bureau of Meteorology has predicted. And once again, BOM is not wrong in predicting 80 millimetres for your location. You've just got special weather phenomena because of your location. And it would be a shame, uh, it is quite a shame that we don't have like a 1.5 or a 2 or a 3 kilometre resolution forecast model because that would really provide us with the detail necessary to make accurate forecasts in far north Queensland. We're really, we're really only stuck with about 9 to 10 kilometer resolution forecast models, which are great, mind you. They're just not the cutting edge anymore. They were just a couple of years ago, but certainly not anymore. In terms of other interesting weather around the nation, I have noticed that there could be a run of warm weather um, across parts of New South Wales and into Queensland next Wednesday and Thursday. It has since kind of dropped up on the forecast, uh, but 35 degree days certainly are on the forecast by the looks of things uh, for parts of uh, Queensland and also into New South Wales with that developing low pressure area. Actually, no, it's more sort of Monday or Sunday and Monday. We could be seeing some warmer days through there. Uh, nothing crazy in terms of heat for this time of the year. I mean, of course, where the weather is obviously cooling down as we get into the uh, dry season up in the tropical northern parts of Australia. But again, uh, still could be a couple of warmer than average days. 35 is certainly pushing closer to four or five degrees Celsius above average. Nothing either in uh, terms of ridiculously cold at nights as well for Southern Australia yet. So that's some good news for people that don't like to be frozen out. Um, in fact, the temperature just doesn't look like it wants to drop below uh, zero degrees just yet. A couple of nights in Tasmania will be bitterly cold uh, next uh, week as well as we get uh, further into April. You'd be seeing some nights that go below freezing through there, but again, nothing crazy by the looks of things. Uh, we're definitely starting to move into that winter pattern though for Western Australia. I can really start to feel it now in the mornings. They're getting quite cold around the Perth area, 15 degrees and blowing her guts out from the east. Uh, so yeah, very typical uh, autumn, uh, autumn change of the pattern, that's for sure. In terms of tropical activity, Activity as well, it's really starting to wind down. We just talked about the Far North Queensland event. I think that might be the last significant rainfall event that we have to cover, apart from the off uh, July or August rainfall events that Far North Queensland can get every now and then. Uh, but again, 
I really do think wet season 2024 is coming to a pretty dramatic end in all fairness. I mean, a Category 4 cyclone from Olga and another pretty significant run of wet weather for Far North Queensland. I think she is finally starting to calm down. Anyway, I'm really starting to waffle on here. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Your support really does mean a lot. And supporting the channel recently has been fantastic. So I do want to thank you very much. We're nearing in on 14,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. Um, and yeah, just join the club and get forecast updates every single day. Haven't missed a day for two months. Not going to miss a day for quite a while uh, either. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.